Assalamu alaikum everyone. Welcome to lecture number three of Introduction to Dairy Technology. This lecture will be focused on cow, sheep and goat milk. Overall, what the terms are which are normally used inside these production mechanisms. Then uh, a comparison of how the milking mechanism works in sheep and goat, like we discussed previously in lecture number two in the cow specifically. So let's dive into it and see. Milk is the primary source of food for the young mammals during the initial period of their life. It is not only a source of energy, but is also rich with the building materials needed for their growth. It contains the antibodies which help protect them against different sort of initial infections, right? So, heifer, which is the cow's baby, but approximately younger than two years of age is known as heifer but it is a virgin cow which has not uh, yet been naturally or artificially inseminated. Insemination is the process of introduction of semen to pregnant the cow and um, other than that yes that's about it okay so before the age of two years a heifer is then impregnated naturally or artificially. The gestation period or the pregnancy time period is nine months in the cow, which is usually uh, measured in terms of weeks or in months, right? It is also considered to be on an average 265 to 300 days, or varies according to the breed of the cow. And uh, in general, we can say that heifer gives birth to the first calf at the age of about 2 to 2.5 years old yeah so after the calving or giving birth to the calf part duration all different terms the cow must then be inseminated at her next heat cycle we'll go into this detail in a bit later chapters and stick with the basics for now after having given birth to approximately five cows then the cow is took uh, taken out and it's then slaughtered and yeah according to certain differences in terms of yield yeah and the yield in the milk production in that sense right okay so these are some basics in the beginning we also need to know that calf approximately needs about 1000 liters of milk for the growth reasons but this quantity is specifically associated with the primitive cows. Now, with the help of selective breeding, the cow's yield has been increased to an average of approximately 6,000 liters of milk per calf. And sometimes this yield is increased to such an extent that the figure has reached approximately 14,000 liters or more in certain cows breeds. So it's important here to just revise that the production of milk is associated with the birth of the babies, the calves, right? So impregnation or the continuation of the next gestation period is important here. That's why they need to be impregnated again into their next heat cycle. And the process starts when the heifer is approximately two to uh, two, uh, under two years old, yeah? So in this mechanism, we would also hear the term lactation cycle. So what is lactation cycle? Secretion of the milk in the cow's udder begins shortly before the birth of the calf, so that whenever the calf is born, the feed is available to the calf immediately after the birth. We know it's the primary source of food for them, so only so a source of food for them in the beginning, so it's very important. The cow then produces this milk for approximately 300 days. This period of milk production is known as lactation. So wherever you will read this term, you will understand that lactation is associated with the milk production after the birth of cow, which starts a bit before shortly before calving one to two months after the calving then the cow is serviced again during the next day uh, next heat cycle okay now let's stick to the lactation process during the lactation period for example in the best days 
if the lactation was just for an example, 100%, yeah? After approximately 300 days of milk production, this 100% decreases down 15 to 25% of the total. For example, it decreases down to 75 to 80% of its peak volume, yeah? It goes to 75 to 80% of the total volume. At this stage, specifically according to the data available, the milking process is then discontinued and this period is known as drying up period of the cow. It's a non-lactating period where the milk is not taken from the cow and the reason for doing this so that the nutrients can be preserved inside that cow again so that in the next heat cycle when the, cow, when the gestation period begins again after the insemination, by natural or artificial means, the cow would have some nu nutrients stored inside the body again. This uh, the drying up period is approximately for 60 days. And uh, going ahead with the lactation cycle again, when the calf is born, the new lactation cycle begins. We are already familiar with this now, that it's associated with the birth of a calf. So initially five, four days approximately, the colostrum milk is being produced this colostrum milk is highly heat sensitive because it's rich with antibodies and it contains um, high, high concentration of proteins so it's heat sensitive and what happens is if you take some colostrum for the industrial usage it would clog up and cause some serious blockages in the processing line because we know industrially we only use the milk after the uh, pasteurization process, right? So certain degrees of temperature is given to the milk so that we can ensure that it's fit enough for the consumption. There are no bacterial loads present inside and the already existing bacterial colonies are completely, uh, how should I say, diminished. So this to identify the presence of colostrum in the milk, we do an initial quality control test on the raw milk, which is COB. You might be listening or reading this term, which is clots on boilings abbreviation COB test. We identify this COB test is used to identify the colostrum presence inside the milk. And this quality control test is done initially on the farm or on the collection center, which we will go into the detail later. Okay, so now I think we have just the basic understanding of what a lactation cycle is, how can we explain better what the lactation is, how long it goes on for the, uh, in the cows, right? And what's, our, the, what's the point of doing COB? Going ahead, let's take a look how the milking mechanism is triggered. In the pituitary glands, there is a hormone stored, which is known as oxytocin. When a stimuli is provided to the cow, a message is sent to the hip, uh, hypo, uh, hypothalamus, yeah, which triggers the release of oxytocin into the blood, which further triggers or starts the emptying of the udder. Milk actually moves from gland cistern to the teat cistern and then teat canal where, from where it sucked out with the help of the hand milking hands. In terms of hand milking, hands are used to you know, provide pressure and then the milk is ejaculated out from the teat canal. And in terms of machine milking, the cups are used. So when the cow is prepared, how it is prepared, what's the correct stimuli? In the primitive cows, we used the calves. So primitive stimuli is when the calf begins to suck on the teat of the cow, the milking, uh, the milking production will start. Yeah, the hormone will be released uh, from the pituitary glands. And industrial stimuli include um, sounds associated stimuli or other sensation-based stimuli which are used to effectively trigger the release of oxytocin hormone into the body. I'll explain it in a bit with the help of a diagram. So letdown reflex is basically five to eight minutes long 
in a cow and this is the window where you actually have to milk the cow productively because after this letdown reflex fades away after eight minutes what would happen is the effect of oxytocin in the blood stream will be diluted and decomposed disappearing completely after eight minutes and then after this time period when you will attempt to strip the cow the unnecessary strain on the udder will make the cow irritated and it would be very difficult to continue the milking process so you need to use that time period and that's why letdown reflex is important to understand five to eight minute long letdown reflex is associated in the cows it's different for the goats and milk we'll go into the detail of it later into those specific sections and with the help of a diagram if you take a look when we stimulate the udder a message is sent using the spinal cord hypothalamus then triggers the release of oxytocin from the pituitary glands which is then transferred to the body then it reaches alveoli now when it reaches alveoli what happens is approximately after a minute of its release the muscles or uh, you know how would it how do we say the muscles like cell which are myoepithelial they begin to compress the alveoli we are already familiar how the milk from the alveoli is produced in the lecture number two you can go into the that lecture again if you want to review it this compressioning of alveoli generates pressure in the udder which can actually be felt this felt pressure is known as the letdown reflex pressure forces the milk down from the gland grand cistern to the teat cistern from where it is sucked into the teat cup if we are using milking machine or it is then pressed out with the help of compression and relaxation of the fingers if you're doing the hand milking process Thank <laughs> you.